I'd like to call this meeting of the Northwest Local School District Board of Education to order. Larry, if you would call the roll, please. Mr. Detzel? Here. Mrs. Detzel? Here. Mr. Harlow? Here. Mr. Heather? Here. Mr. Unger? Here. I would ask that you all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our next item is approval of minutes. So we have the meeting minutes from August 25th. The treasurer and superintendent recommend the Board of Education approve the minutes as listed. So moved. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Larry, please call for a vote. motion carries five to zero <clears throat> our next item is a legislative update mr. Harlow uh, thank you uh, basically during uh, during the last two weeks of August uh, they held a uh, held hearings to uh, consider House Bill 597 which would overturn uh, Common Core replace it with uh, what's basically the standards that Massachusetts used Massachusetts was considered prior to Common Core to have the most rigorous standards in the nation uh, and use that for two years while they develop their own standards. That bill uh, will have a third hearing this week in front of the House Rules and Reference Committee. As I mentioned last week, it would be, <coughs> it was taken out of the House Education Committee and uh, it could be passed out of committee as early as this week with uh, possible full House action by the end of September. Um, I would imagine then that if it passes, the Senate would take that up in lame duck. Uh, which would be after the election, but before the end of the calendar year. So I will keep you informed as that progresses. Thank you, Mr. Harlow. Our next item is a Butler Tech update. Mr. Detzel? Uh, Dan, uh, no update uh, this week. Our board meeting is next Tuesday. Okay, thank you, Jim. Our next item is report from employee organizations. Is there anyone here from the Certificated Licensed Employee Group that would like to speak? Seeing no one. Report from classified employees. Is there anyone from a, a classified employee organization who wishes to speak? Report from school-related organizations. Is there a representative from a school-related organization who would like to speak? The next item is community comments. I have received no request to speak for the community comments portion of the meeting. The next item is a certificated licensed personnel item, Dr. Jackson. Yes, on the agenda we have several procedural resignations for tutors, preschool extended day, uh, and seed and home instructors. So the superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the certificated and licensed personnel retirements and resignations as listed. So moved. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Um, just a question. Uh, Andrew, with the uh, English as a second language, do we get any state money or federal money for that? Yes, we get Title III money for it. I don't know the total amount. Um, in the past, it's been around $35,000. Do you have an update for this um, year? It's about the same. We also just recently received an immigrant allocation, only a couple thousand dollars, but that is the first time that we've ever had students that qualified under the immigrant stipulation you know, for funds. Okay. All right, it does not cover all the expenses, though, that we're required to provide, the service we're pro uh, required to provide. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, Chris, please call for a vote. The motion is approved, 5 to 0. Our next item is a classified personnel item. Yes, we have two classified resignations and several procedural resignations. The superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the classified retirements and resignations as listed. So moved. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, Chris, please call for a vote. 
The motion is approved five to zero. The next item is approval of a new fund. This is a new fund for a grant that we received to upgrade some of the security features at our schools. Uh, Todd Bowling submitted for the grant and we were approved. So the treasurer and superintendent recommend the Board of Education approve the new fund as listed. So moved. Second. Motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> uh, how much is involved in this? It varies from school to school, the two high schools. The total of the grant is $5,000. Some of our smaller elementaries, Weigel, um, Welch, were $1,500. Both high schools qualified for $5,000, so it varied for all 13. And then um, we also received um, an additional grant for the $2,000 alarm system that will be installed in each school, um, and that was $1,900 for each school, all 13 of them, includes Houston and our two high schools, three elementaries, or three middle schools and eight elementaries. <coughs> Great, thank you. And what exactly, what is that going to go for? Uh, like uh, the first one, the $5,000 grant was the um, buzzer system and the fobs to get into each school. <coughs> it was a way to secure the buildings so there was only one entryway. Um, the teachers and staff at each building <coughs> chose which entryway they wanted to fob. The rest of the do doors remain locked during the day so when they come in in the morning or they come in at night, they don't use the fob or there's no way to get in. Um, the other part was some of the camera systems at the school. So that when a visitor buzzes, the camera will show who's there so they can see before they enter. The second aspect of it was a grant for the alarm system. Um, we will have alarms that will go into each of our schools, spread out through the school. So if there's an intruder who somehow gets in and is spotted in the hallway, um, they can go to our computer and access the alarm. It gives you immediate contact to the police department. There is no delay. There is no going to a person. They get immediate radio dispatch, and it's more efficient than them getting here quicker. <clears throat> That's great. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, Chris, please call for a vote. The motion is approved, five to zero. The next item is a general business item, Dr. Jackson. Yes, I'm gonna turn this over to Mr. Bowling again here. We have a small area of the roof at Corrin Elementary that is in need of urgent repair. Um, it's gonna be over $25,000, which um, would normally require bidding. But it's something we need to do quickly, so I'll let Todd kind of describe this to you. Kramer Roofing has a, a system in place that evaluates our roofing on a yearly basis and gives us updates um, on how things are going. Each of our custodians at each of our building are required to do a monthly inspection of our roof. They sign up on a form, they send it over to me. Um, when they went to Coleraine Elementary, they found that a certain part of the roof that's in the middle of the two wings is starting to collapse. It's starting to go down to the beams, um, and if we don't get it fixed quickly, um, it could lead to some more internal damage. And with the winter coming up and um, want to avoid a strong storm or rain or thunder or high winds, we want to get it fixed as soon as possible so that the environment is safe and learning. So in order to not bid the project, yet, the board has to adopt a resolution determining that it is of urgent necessity. So the superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the resolution for emergency roof repair as listed. So moved. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Chris, please call for a vote. The motion carries five to zero. Our next <coughs> item is a certificated licensed personnel item. Yes, we have one administrative initial appointment, one change in status. Uh, we have several tutors, extended day and C teachers, home instructors several extra duty contracts, several athletic event workers, and a re resolution to hire four non-licensed coaches. The superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the certificated licensed personnel items as listed. So moved. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? It's just nice to see on the tutor list here some um, recently uh, retirees that have been long-time wonderful teachers in the district and that they're going to come back to help tutor. So. Is there any other discussion? I would just like to comment to the audience that these meetings are posted with the agendas. I think we have it up Friday, so we've all had a chance to look through these, along with the general public, too, if you log on to our website. So everybody's had a chance to review these. So I'll go ahead and ask Chris to call for a vote. The motion carries 5 to 0. Our next item is a classified personnel item. 
Yes, and before we move to that one, I want to turn it over to uh, Tracy Ray, who's going to introduce our newest administrator who the board just approved a few moments ago for our Assistant Director of Human Resources. Northwest Local School District would like to welcome Dr. Stephanie Kessling as the Assistant Director of Human Resources and Professional <coughs> Development. Stephanie comes to us from Finneytown Local Schools, where she was a principal from 2006 through current 2014. Prior to that, she served as the principal of Elmwood Place Elementary from 2002 to 2006. Stephanie has a bachelor's degree in special education from the University of Virginia, a master's degree in elementary education from Emory University, and a doctorate of education in organizational leadership. Stephanie is here tonight with her husband, Ben, Carly, her 11-year-old daughter, one uh, the youngest of five children, her mother, Judy Johnson, and dad, Glenn Johnson. Please join me in welcoming Stephanie to her new role. Well, thank you and welcome. Thank you. We're glad to have you here. All right, on classified personnel, I think we, move, we need to move back one. Okay, was there any other discussion? We need to go back to classified personnel. We haven't. That's what I'm on that. right now. 12.4. Come on, 12. You want me on 12.4? What, what do you want? What do you want it on? Twelve point four. Okay. Classified personnel item. Yes. We have twelve initial appointments, five preschool extended and seed assistants, two classified substitutes, and eight changes in status. The superintendent recommends the board of education approve the classified personnel items as listed. So moved. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Chris, please call for a vote. The motion is approved, five to zero. Our next item is a general business item, Dr. Jackson. Yes, I'm going to turn it over to the representatives from Roth Lesko, the uh, district architects, who will give the board an update on the master facility plan. gets into more information about the, uh, the building you. assessment, I thought I'd just brief you uh, on what our agenda is going to be for the next uh, couple of meetings. This is, I think we start to get into the really exciting part, uh, at least for me anyways, as we start to uh, begin to look at options and as we gather all the information together. And uh, we're going to meet with the, uh, the staff uh, next week. And what we're going to do is discuss a little bit about the master planning process. They haven't uh, been involved in that yet. But what we're really trying to do with the staff is, from their perspective, look at the needs that they believe are, are uh, present at the, the different facilities related to mostly, you know, instructional delivery. And coming from that perspective, we do a couple exercises where we have them look at it individually, and then we bring them together as groups, and we try to synthesize down, uh, you know, to the major, you know, half a dozen uh, needs that they have. So we'll go through that exercise uh, with them, and then we'll bring that information along with all the rest that we've been uh, collecting back to the, uh, to the committees. What we're going to start to do with the uh, facility committee is bring all this information together and begin to generate options, master plan options. And in the beginning, you look at everything. We don't go in with any preconceived notions, but we're going to have to be talking about the enrollment. We're going to be talking about the facility study. We're going to be talking about the input we got from the, uh, the staff, the educators, and then to begin to look at uh, the implications of all that related to your, to your master plan and begin to develop uh, a number of options. At the same time, the uh, finance committee is going to be looking at uh, the financial 
data in terms of uh, what levies uh, you have, the, the timing of different things, uh, your bonded indebtedness, look at different type of funding options, and uh, we'll also review the reports with them so they can see the implications of, of uh, those dollars on, on the master plan. But they're basically over here looking at the financial data, and then we're going to bring the two together uh, shortly after that to, uh, to compare notes, and then they'll work together on developing uh, the final group of master plan options. So I just wanted to share that uh, with you, but it's the kind of rubber meets the road now as we bring all this information together. Dick's going to, uh, do you have any questions on that? Sorry. Dick's going to talk about the uh, facility assessment, but uh, first I just wanted to, to point out one thing before he, he gets started. Uh, and I wanted to point to the, the ratio that we have here of, of renovation to new. And you'll look right at the top with Houston, but you've got quite a large uh, ratio, 148%. And just to note that, that this is a little uh, distorted in one sense, because when we look at a new building, we take the amount of students and what a new building for that many students would be. And as we've discussed uh, that this building has more than students in it. So we just have to, when we're looking at percentages, you have a couple buildings that have more than students in it. So when we're looking at that in the end, uh, you know, we have to take that into consideration. So this number it, it is, looks a little high because of that, that reason. So I just wanted to, to note that before Dick gets, gets started. And the other thing, I guess, is that, you know, Dick's going to talk about five years versus five plus years in terms of, of renovation cost. And just to know that this isn't a hard line that, that you have. As we look at the master planning process and what you're going to do to your different buildings, some things may slide a little bit over that line of five years to five years and over. So uh, just to note, it's, it's not a, uh, a hard line. But this will give you a pretty good idea of, of where your needs are. Dick? Thanks, Rob. Do you have hard copies of this that you're, okay, all right. I'm glad you asked that question. Keep up on the screen this time. Um, as I did last meeting, I will start out with a quick uh, report about the Beavis Elementary School. Um, it's a 14 acre site and the building, potential uses for the building include a school or a training facility, that type of uh, business um, but the building is in poor condition so I'm not sure that you are going to find too many takers for that building as that uh, with um, as that type of facility site wise and and what I looked at was the zoning for that it's all residential and so one of your uses could be residential use going forward perhaps uh, subdivide the property and put something on it like a church, something that is more um, residential type of building. Um, offices, that's a bit of a stretch. You might need to develop a secondary entrance for offices for that site. And those types of development costs, I think those are the kind of things you'd want to look at with a developer or a real estate um, appraiser who could help you with those numbers. Um, senior center, those kinds of things, those are, those are more of a stretch, but because of the residential surrounding and the, the nice um, park that's nearby, I think the, the, that residential use should be looked at first. So that's, uh, that's Beavis, and I'll, when we <coughs> distribute this report, um, I'll add that to the tail end as a, a part of the report. Um, as Rob mentioned, these are a little bit hard to see. Let's see if I can advance. Let's see what I did. There we go. Uh, a little bit of a blow up there. The um, Rob mentioned this this ratio, and and this is useful in terms of numbers of students that are actually in the building. Um, and we look, so some of those 
skew towards the high part. Some, some get lower, and it just happens to be how many students per square foot you have that affects that number. The key thing to look at, though, is this district, square footage-wise, is where you ought to be. And so the bottom line number is, is more of an apples-to-apples -apples comparison for all of your buildings. Uh, one thing that we realized in, in looking at the five-year costs and the, the types of things that we put in that near-term um, cost category, and, and this is one thing I should say that the state did not do. When they do their assessments, they simply say, you're either going to renovate it or you're going to tear it down or you're going to keep it in use. Um, we looked at it from the standpoint of what might you do first. Uh, it becomes a bit of a judgment, and, and as we go through the master plan process, some of these buildings we will want to say, okay, if we keep this, can we keep it in business for 10 years, and then it goes. And that's where this number becomes valuable to you, because you're looking at, uh, what do we need a new alarm system? Do we want to put money into an alarm system if we don't air condition the building? And those are the kind of judgment calls that as you begin to go through the master plan, you will you will say okay this is this is this we like the location or we don't like the location it can be added on to or et cetera et cetera so that's that is that is an upfront kind of uh, urgent items most of them involve roofs I think the, the little foreshadowing there with what's going on at Coleraine Elementary in the roof um, the the roofs need to be taken care of in all of these buildings we put that. A large chunk of the roof costs in that five-year category. Other things um, involve some structural items, uh, masonry repair. If you know you're going to get rid of the building in the long term, you don't need to do it today. Masonry generally is not something, and 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 it, a lot of this it's just simply been put off because it could be. Um, so that's that's the value of these numbers. One other thing that I wish to point out, these numbers here, the middle schools, um, and this, this top one, they're in alphabetical order. So this, this top one of the middle schools, that's Coleraine, then you go to Pleasant Run, and then, and then White Oak. They are actually lower, um, some by more, some, some by less, but, but they are lower than what the state had uh, uh, judged to be renovation costs in 2009. Um, Coleraine High School was lower. I think a lot of this is because we're seeing the effects of your putting money into those buildings as you've been going on over the past five years. You know, you've, you've got a permanent improvements levy and some of that. The surprise to me was to look at Northwest and the cost, uh, part of this 86% is because the building has a higher capacity than it's being used right now. But part of that is it looks great, it's been well cared for, but the stuff that's behind the walls is beginning to go. And so we should really look at that if we're going to keep that building and say, okay, what do we need to do? One of the, one of the big factors is the all-electric heating system. And in, in, in really drilling down into this with our engineers, their feeling is that, that that might not, it might be something that you just say, we're going to let that run until it finally gives out. But there's going to be a limit to that thing. So those are the kind of issues when we look at the comparison of these two columns and what those numbers are that we will use with the master plan. So there's going to be, it's not that the numbers themselves are fuzzy, but <coughs> From this column to that column, there's a little bit of, of push and pull. So with that, I'll open it up for any questions regarding what we found. So am I looking at this that it's only five to 6,000 for now? There's not a whole lot of difference between renovating and a new building for Northwest because of those issues? Because of those issues. Um, and that's why I say those are, that's the kind of thing I want to drill down into the numbers, look back at the state's assessment and say, okay, did they see something that we didn't? Or um, 
And, and another example would be uh, bus turnaround. If the state says, oh, you need a bus turnaround, well, operationally, your staff might look at you and say, you know what, we've been making this work for a long time and we think it's plenty safe. Then that's, that's good. That number, can, that number can come back out of there and you say, okay, we think going forward this building is you know, a viable building. But what we're trying to find out is what ones really are viable and what ones are not. Now, when you say the bus turn around, you, you do know that we have no high school bus. Right. So yeah, that's that's probably when that, the bus turnaround is really short sure in middle schools. Why would the um, I, I'm not quite sure you've got the column five cost five years and then um, cost five years plus. How come the numbers are so drastically different? I mean, what is the five school? years just on any of them? You know, like if you look at um, the very bottom one, Northwest High School. Okay. Cost five years is two million four hundred fifty-four thousand. Cost five plus years is twenty-nine million. I, I don't. Is that projecting like at thirty years or something? Or yes. Okay. Um, and and if you combine those into the total system, or the total the total number for that building, that would be okay. We're going to update it to today's standards. So you would it gets an all-new heating system. And again, that goes back to that electric heating system. It gets all-new plumbing. Well, in the next five years, you really don't need that. I mean, that's not something that you have to have. That five-year column is, are things that are more urgent. And so you would look at, and I, I, working from the top of my head, but an example might be a uh, security system that's needed and, and I don't, off the top of my head, I don't think Northwest is one that has to have a security system right away, but there, there were others. Um, when you go through the master plan process, you'll look at that number and you'll say, yeah, but if we're going to keep this building and put, and put that much into it, are, are we better off waiting on that security system? So, you, you know, you kind of have to have that push and pull. But the, yeah, the reason that five year number is so much less is that stuff that we think you really need to do it's right away. Basically, incorporating the five plus years is incorporating, like if you were to sell a house, new roof, new driveway, um, new windows, right. just basically you're almost rebuilding the school. Yeah, it's what, it's what you would have to add to the number in order to bring it up to today's standards. Okay. That's really what right. it is. Right. Okay. And so the first column is the emergency what number, do, what right, needs to be done. Critical okay. number in the next five years that you would have to address on the building. And then the second number is all the rest that you would have to do to it to bring it up to today's standards. Okay. You know, when you say like a new heating system, for instance, for North Coast, how much is ballpark, how much is something like that? Um, you know, you know, do you, do you stay with electric? Do you go to gas? Yes, you would not stay with electric. Right. And that was the discussion I had with the engineer. It's okay, why can we do this? For instance, Pleasant Run Middle has a similar type system, and his comment was, that one, you could probably, if you want to keep the building, you could probably replace it, and it would make some sense, because I can figure out a way to design this thing so that that works. At Northwest, the costs are going to kill you, and here's, you know, here's why. Um, so he looked at a heating system at Northwest, Six million dollars, yeah. roughly, to to replace the heating system. It was, it was in that, right? Or I guess six, yes, six point six million. Okay. So that's that is the kind of thing that when you when you get in, certain systems are just sure. going to cost. You know, one of the numbers, and this is this was an interesting. Um, 
part of the assessment. One of the numbers that we put in the five-year plan, and this is a discussion we should have with the master planning, um, is windows. We think there's a payback there for windows, even if you don't go to air conditioning, but in a lot of these schools, you could put money into windows and then you would save enough money in the heating, if you're going to keep the school for 10 sure. years, that, that it does pay back. And so those we generally put in the five-year category because we think that, that there's a potential there. Um, that, would, that would be one that if you say, look, I don't have the money to do right away, maybe you just put it off. But if you do it now, you'll get your payback out. So there's, there are positive reasons to do some of these things, and then there are negative. I don't know. I, I, I hope that was. Uh, <laughs> well, it makes it makes <laughs> I hope that sense. That illuminates it. Yeah. It's yeah. The numbers will make you swim until you until you dig into them. And and for us, Rob and I were talking. It's a lot easier to look at diagrammatics <coughs> in di of of how these buildings might uh, unfold over time. And that's where the master plan process. Comes in. Just as a general question about Beavis once again. Um, the building's obviously sitting and we're having a monthly cost to maintain it. At what point in this process that we're going through with you will you be able to make a hard recommendation on what to do with the building and the property? You're kind of dancing around on it just a little bit. You mean to like tear it down? I want to hear it from him. <laughs> I just want to, I mean, what, at what point will we, will it be in December when you're able to say that or February? Or? You, I think you ought to explore it right now is to, with, with a take it to the next level because I don't think that building is viable as a, as a school building. I don't think. Uh, I thought that was the whole reason we closed it anyhow. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's, I, don't, I don't think I know, that but building do we, is going to be under consideration for the So do we, I mean, the, the choices are tear it down and sell the property, sell it as is. And, and that's why I think whatever. you ought to look into what, what the costs are for other types of development. Right now the housing market is starting to come back. Is, is there a potential for housing on there? I, I think personally looking at that, you know, our recommendation would be to start looking at how that property could be developed as residential property. Well, and then that would at least give us a tax revenue producing, if you put 20, if it's 14 acres, then there was 10 of it that was usable and you put 20 houses back there, that would allow you to generate some revenue and some new families for the district. And, or, or would it make more sense to perhaps split off part of it and go to sell it to a church? Um, or, you know, are there other ways to do that? And I think that's the kind of thing that you, that you need to look at. But the building itself, um, you know, if it were in this list with all the rest of the other buildings, it's near the bottom of the path. But is, is that acreage part of a transitional site ever? Or, I mean, and I don't expect you to know that now, but at what point will you be able to, you be able to say, you know what, hang on to that 14 acres for about two years because you're going to transition some assets over there for... Yeah, uh, for swing space yeah. Or, yeah. or storage or whatever you're using it for storage now. Um, when we, the yeah, store, we the, the store and locks are a gold mine. We don't need to be using it for storage. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very expensive storage I, I facility. Think, I think Rob's... Rob's yeah, we'll move pretty quick yeah. as we go okay. through the master plan. Yeah, so the building to plan. needs to be torn down. I mean, it's, it's and that's uh, what I, I want to hear as a recommendation from the architect, which is a we never saw you guys before two or three months ago, and you're not from here, so that's what I would rather hear from somebody that is yeah, independent really and outside. And the amount of money somebody would have to put into it that would buy it to renovate it, it's, it's probably not viable for anybody else to. The, the key to it is what to use that site for and, and how it relates to your master plan, which we'll know very soon. Okay. And that's, that's part of why yeah. we want to keep that part of the discussion going, because that's just cash out the door every month that we're paying to maintain that. So, What would um, 14 acres, um, I suspect you know, they factor in having to tear it down, but is that a significant amount of money at all? I mean, it's not, I don't think you could put $500,000 homes back there. 
um, probably put nice homes back there. But um, uh, do you have any idea what the property might be worth? I don't. Yeah. I know we have to do some layouts. Yeah, we, we have an appraisal on the on the property. I don't remember the the amount, but it's it's a large amount. I mean, I, I maybe three four hundred thousand dollars or something like that. You know, um, the intention was always to wait on that and to use this potential swing space that there may be a new elementary that gets built there. Um, we can't sell it because we have to offer it to a community school first. So there's a process for that. Even if we right. want to get rid of it, there's, there's the community process, community school mm -hmm. process as well. We'd have to look through all that. Um, and we have a preliminary cost of what it would take to raise the building as well, if that's what we wanted to do. But we are using it for storage, so we'd have to figure out something to do with the um, items that are in there currently and where we would store them. And you know, that costs money as well, to even to store things. I'm not sure if it costs much more to leave it there than it does to rent storage space. You know, we're not putting, we're putting very, I mean, minimal amount in that space. There's, there's a phone line that's going in there for security, and there's some minimal heat for gas, and that's pretty much it. I, th I think our, when we were on that committee, it was about 34,000 a year to maintain that yeah. property. So, I mean, it is something we want to <coughs> right, figure out what we're going to do with. We could turn that $34,000 into Sixty thousand dollars worth of tax income if there was houses back there. So I mean, I just want to keep that part of the conversation yeah, it's going. Really, uh, Mr. Jackson made the point that uh, you know we want to see if it you may need it. Put the building on or some, some Just so just want to keep the discussion going on if as you guys make your presentation. So, Does anybody have anything else? I really appreciate you coming out and updating Thank us. You. Our next item is community comments and questions. If there's anyone in the audience who has a question or comment specific to what's been discussed at tonight's meeting, uh, please approach the microphone. And seeing no one, we'll move on to our next item, which is executive session. The board <coughs> consider a motion to move into executive session to consider the appointment, employment, Dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official and to conference with an attorney concerning disputes that are the subject of pending or intimate court action. Should we do board items first? <coughs> Skip ahead or? Yeah, I think we, we can, I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah. Please? Are you, wait, are you waiting for my record? That covers it, yes. Okay. Or he has to Wait for your oh, I'm sorry. The superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the motion to move into executive session as listed. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I would just add maybe we should do our member comments in case people leave while we're in executive session. And in fact, there may be a permanent change to make to the agenda to sure. put our member comments ahead of exec whenever we have it. Well, let's vote to go into executive okay. session then sure. after we do board items. Is that what we want to do? That's sure. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, Chris, please call for a vote. Motion carries 5 to 0. Did any of the board members have any uh, final comments on tonight's meeting? Mr. Detzel? No. Mr. Harlow? Uh, <clears throat> believe it or not, after all that, I actually don't have any comments. I just wanted to bring that up because <laughs> I just wanted to bring that up because we had talked about it last time and just think going forward is probably the way to go. So, uh, Mrs. Detzel? That's why I was hesitating. I don't have any either. Mr. Heater? <laughs> no, Dan. No. That's very unusual, Chris. Um, I'd like to thank but I can you. think of something. No, that's okay, Chris. You already said no, and <laughs> I'd have to change the agenda to bring you back on. Um, Thank you everyone for coming. We're going to go into an executive session and we've got a few things to discuss and we might be back there quite a while. So um, <laughs> we don't anticipate taking any action. We will come back into this room to close the meeting. So we will go to executive session. Okay.